Welcome to the Coastal Kitchen. I'm Karen Meshures, and we're so glad to have this great piece of veal to work with today. We're going to be making osobuco. Osobuco means a bone with a hole. Osobuco is um, a dish that originally came from Milan, Italy. Um, it's more of a country farm type meal. It's wonderful for company, and I'm having company tonight, so this is what I'm going to serve. Let's start out with our veal shanks. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my stove on. I'm going to turn it on medium and I'm going to put in about a fourth of a cup of canola oil and I'm going to put about a tablespoon of olive oil. We're going to let that start to get warm. Let's get it rolled around this pan. When you make this dish, make sure you use something that transfers from stove to oven because it will go right in that pan. Okay, the first thing I better do is get my salt and pepper because we're going to take these veal shanks and dredge them in flour. And then we're going to salt and pepper. And some of that salt and pepper gets down in the flour too, so helps the next one along. Let's go for number two. Let's put these two pieces in. Lay them gently. Let's turn that up just a little bit. Get these next two pieces. The longer you cook osabuco, seems the more tender it gets. So you want to make sure that you do let it cook the full amount of time and it's not so particular that if you let it cook longer, it doesn't get better. It does. It just melts in your mouth. Alright, last one. Starting to sizzle. Now this is going to go about eight minutes on each side. To start, we want the um, meat to become just a golden brown and get that ready to uh, go into the oven feeling. Okay, and the next step is the vegetables that go into the dish. I have four carrots that I've washed and peeled. And we're going to cut the carrots in nice healthy chunks. Want it to be about two inches, maybe a little bit more than that. Just good healthy pieces. We've got carrots and celery, tomatoes. Originally, Osobuco didn't have tomatoes in it, and it was served with a pasta or a polenta. Modern, modern day Osobuco, you can do that, or you can use whipped potatoes or mashed potatoes, and that's what we're going to do today. All right, let's get some celery going. Same way, we want nice, nice healthy pieces. And you know what? The leaves of the celery give it so much flavor. So we're going to leave those leaves right in there. Okay. Got that ready. I'm going to turn my meat just to make sure that everything's going good with it. Let's take a piece. It's starting to get there. It's cut up an onion. I like to use a big onion. You can use red onion or yellow sweet onions. And all I'm going to do, take the peel off. And we're going to do it in nice healthy chunks also. Okay. 
and these are sort of small, so I'm going to do two. Get all that out of the way. Okay, got our onions. Now let's try that meat again. Ready to turn. We've just got a little work to do before we take these out. They're browning beautifully. Let's come back over here. The one thing that um, I want to make sure you do, and whether you like it, uh, is your preference to do it. But I always use fresh tomatoes in my Osobuco, and I use canned tomatoes because I want that fresh flavor and so I'm chunking these fairly big because I want them just to cook down. Let's get all that green part out and I'm going to use two tomatoes. I'm going to use about 14 ounces of um, crushed tomatoes and I'm going to use about a cup of Roma tomatoes that have come out of the can. We're going to cut those up too. All right, tomatoes done there. And I think it's time that we can take our Oso Buco to the next step. I'm going to turn that off for just a moment and I'm going to put this right on the plate out of the pan. Let that set for just a few minutes. Okay, you can see we've got lovely brown bits and a little bit of something that looks like gravy in the bottom of the pan. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to throw in my carrots. Let's grab a couple handfuls here because they take just a little bit longer than the rest of the vegetables to cook down. So I want them started and my onions. This is a fun meal. And let's get all those in. Grab a spoon. Want to stir them around a little bit. And those onions will break up just a little bit as you go. All right, we're going to keep that on for about three minutes. Want the onions to become a little bit tender, not brown, just a little tender. And we're going to work on the tomatoes while that's happening. Let's get a couple of these out of here. Just take them and give them a rough chop. And I'm going to do about, just about a cup. Gives it great flavor. The one thing about this that's not in the recipe is that if you feel like the tomatoes have given it a little bit of a bitterness, just like you would with a spaghetti sauce, throw a tablespoon of sugar in, sweeten it up a little bit, and take that bitterness right out of the dish. Okay, I think we've got enough there. And we're going to carry that over. All right, now I'm going to throw in my celery. Give it another little stir.
and get the rest of our mixture ready. Okay, I have got about 14 ounces of crushed tomato. And you can see, just looks like it's been pureed. I am going to put in a cup of vegetable stock and just give it a nice turn here. I'm going to put my tomatoes in this so it's easy to transfer over. And you can see about two cups total on the tomatoes. You get that. And we've got something else. I've used sweet red wine. A lot of recipes call for dry red, but a sweet wet red works a little bit better in this dish, in my opinion. Gives it a nicer little bit of a flavor. So just roll that around a little bit. And now I'm going to throw my tomatoes in. Doesn't that look wonderful? Give it another good stir. Okay, let's pour this right over the top. I like the freshness of a little lemon zest in my asobuco. So if that's something that you'd like, just zest a little lemon, put it in the pan, and it'll bring a little bit more freshness to this wonderful flavor. Okay, we're gonna let that set for about three minutes and go into our next little step. We've got some fresh thyme, some fresh sage, and some fresh basil. And we are going to put about a teaspoon of each, all chopped up right there. And remember, when you're going for this kind of a herb, if you pinch from the top and slide down, it makes it come off real easy. And I'm just putting it all together here. Okay. All right, let's do it again here. All in, all done. Right on top. Another good stir. We're nearly done with this. Other than the cooking time. Take your veal shanks and situate them right in the liquid between all those vegetables. And it will move around so you can get them in there. Sitting on the vegetables also keeps them from getting too close to the heat of the bottom of the pan. Keeps it nice and tender in that liquid. We're going to cover it. Let's get that down just a little bit further. Want it at least about halfway in there. Okay. We're going to cover this right up. We're going to put it in a 325 degree oven for about, too hot, for about two and a half hours. And as I said, doesn't matter if it stays in longer because it just gets more tender. Okay, got that done, can turn that off. And we're ready to start with our accompaniment. I've got half of my potatoes just about already peeled, ready to go in. Got to put a little salt in. We're going to just give it a good cover. And I know all of you know how to make mashed potatoes. We're going to put them on to boil, turn them down a little bit, and when they're tender, we'll get ready to mash. Let's have a word from our sponsors, and we'll be back with you in a few minutes.
ATMC TV and the Coastal Kitchen would like to say thank you to our sponsors at Food Lion, your neighborhood grocery store. Since 1957, Food Lion has been offering the highest quality products at low prices with great service. Swing by your local Food Lion today to find all the ingredients needed to make the meal featured on this week's show. The asobuco is in the oven. Now we're going to work on our dessert. I think that creme brulee is one of my favorite, and I'm making a plain vanilla custard creme brulee. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take a quart of heavy cream and put in my saucepan, nice and cold. Okay? And we're going to let that sit for just a minute while I get my van vanilla bean ready. All right. That's good. That can go in the trash. Wanted to show you that this lovely big bottle contains one vanilla bean. Okay, we're going to very carefully score it. Don't want to cut all the way through. Right straight down the center. And open it up just a little bit. All the wonderful vanilla is on the inside, and that's what we want to get out. And we're going to use our knife to scrape it. And I'm making a little bit of a mess, but it's working. Okay, I've got all of this vanilla, and we're going to put it right in on top of the cream. Going to throw that whole vanilla bean in there, too. I'm going to put this on a medium high heat and we're going to let it boil and as soon as it boils we're going to turn it off. It then has to sit for about 15 minutes to cool down just a little bit. So it's getting ready to go. Mm, see a little bit of vanilla. Too, too precious to waste. All right, that goes in. Now, in this custard, of course we're using egg yolks. I've got six egg yolks in this bowl right now and we're going to put this one in too. Just going to separate the white from the yellow and there's all sorts of ways to do this. There's all sorts of contraptions to use. Okay? Smell? No, it's good. Okay, I'm going to reserve that because I can make omelets with that later. Let's clean off some hands. In a larger bowl, I'm going to put half a cup of sugar and I'm going to put my egg yolks in. And I'm going to whisk them until that darker yellow color turns a little bit paler. We want that sugar to really get in those eggs because we're going to pour the warm cream over these eggs and it'll make our custard. All right. Remember what I said. Use your arm, not your wrist when you use a whisk. All right. You can see this color has changed. It's more of a lemon yellow now. And I know this is boiling, so let's turn that off real fast. That's got to sit for 15 minutes and cool down. We're going to make sure that this stays stirred. I'm going to clean up a little bit and we'll be back to finish our creme brulee in just a moment. All right, looks like we've had our 15 minutes of waiting time while our cream has cooled down a little bit. I've got everything mixed here so we're ready to go. Now there'll be a little bit of a film on the top of this cream. Don't worry about that, okay? We're going to stir it right back in. And we are going to find that little vanilla bean and pull it right out. The one thing about this vanilla bean, it is good for another use if you want to make some more creme brulee. Just keep it in the refrigerator. Um, one thing you can do also with a vanilla bean is put it in a jar with granulated sugar and make vanilla sugar. You can use vanilla sugar on the top of your creme brulee. Okay. I'm going to slowly pour 
the cream into my egg mixture and I'm going to make sure it gets nice and stirred in before all of it goes in. Okay. It's really not a hard dessert to make and it has a great presentation, great light flavor after you finished a meal of Oso Buco. Okay, you can see all those little lovely vanilla beans. All the little pieces, those lovely pods. Okay, we're getting to the end and we're gonna keep right on mixing. And I'm gonna get all that vanilla out of my pan into my creme brulee. Okay, nice stir. And there are all sorts of things you can do with it. You can flavor it any way you'd like, but I love oranges. So I'm gonna put two tablespoons of Grand Marnier in or any kind of orange flavored liqueur that you like. This is Patron. Just gonna put two in and give it another great stir. Oh, the smell. Mm, wish you were here. And I like to take just a lovely little bit of orange zest. Flavor it just a little bit more. And it's ready to go into my dishes. Now this is gonna take about 45 minutes once we put it in the oven. We're gonna put it in to a 325 degree oven. Let's see if I can do this without getting too messy. And I have the six to seven ounce ramekins that I have made a batch earlier because we are gonna have to finish this up in a little bit of a hurry. Okay, you can see that I've got my ramekins, the large ones, glass pan because I've got to put a water bath. All right, we're gonna be real careful because I don't want any of this water to go into my ramekins. Wanna fill it up about halfway. To the depth of my containers. All right, ready to go in. And I'm gonna put it in this oven over here. You can make creme brulee up to three days before you need it. So it's a great little thing to make and have so you don't have to work yourself really hard on the day that you're going to have company. Okay, you can see I've done individual ramekins for my party tonight. And I'm going to take some brown sugar. And this is um, a natural cane sugar. It's a little bit coarser than regular brown, and you can just use that, or you can combine granulated sugar, and I like to do that too. Just make sure it's evenly distributed on the top. And I've got a little torch, and my little torch is a fun little tool for me but you also can do this under the broiler. You just have to make sure that when you put it under the broiler, you watch it very carefully because it will brown and you definitely don't want it to burn. All right, let's take one and see what we can do. All right, that blue flame is wonderful and I'm going to gently Move my flame back and forth. Just want to make sure that all the sugar melts.
makes a wonderful crust on top. Mm, I can smell it starting to caramelize. Oh, how wonderful. It's getting nice and golden brown. You can see that this is doing beautifully. The sugar is melting. And in an essence of time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to put the rest of these under the broiler. I'm going to watch those for a few minutes. While we get that ready, let's do our potatoes real quick and get our osobuco out of the oven. So, osobuco out. Oh, the aroma, wonderful. Oh, take a look. This is fabulous. Just remember, handles hot. The vegetables are all done and ready. We're going to get our potatoes done real fast. Let's move this bowl over. Get my colander in. Okay, let's drain those potatoes. I'm going to grab a hold of my mixer because these are going to be whipped. Let's put them back in this bowl right here. Get this started. All right, we're getting these potatoes all whipped up. I'm gonna get just a little bit of butter about about two tablespoons. Pop right in there. Oops. And I'm gonna put a little bit of skim milk. Using skim because I'm trying to trying to watch a little bit of calories, but that's hard to do with mashed potatoes. All right, when I come back, we're gonna plate this real fast and have our oso buco with whipped potatoes, creme brulee, and our French onion biscuits. ATMC TV and the Coastal Kitchen would like to say thank you to our sponsors at Food Lion, your neighborhood grocery store. Since 1957, Food Lion has been offering the highest quality products at low prices with great service. Swing by your local Food Lion today to find all the ingredients needed to make the meal featured on this week's show. This is a meal fit for a king. We've got Oso Buco on whipped potatoes, salad of your choice, just tossed. You're going to go to Facebook.com to see our French onion biscuits, how they're made and all the ingredients. I've got creme brulee, nice glass of red wine. You can also check us out at atmctv.com. Thanks for joining us today at the Coastal Kitchen. See you next time.